The problem with this virus is that oftentimes elephants will show no clinical signs whatsoever until the virus has actually grown to huge levels and done huge amounts of internal damage to the organs of these elephants. So for many years, I, I worked on uh, herpes virus that causes chickenpox and shingles in people. And when I was a postdoctoral fellow at Johns Hopkins, I started working on another human herpes virus called Epstein-Barr virus, which causes mononucleosis and different types of human cancers. And I took some of those projects and research with me when I came down here to Houston and was working on that for a number of years. Around 2008, um, a young elephant, young Asian elephant at the Houston Zoo named Mac, who is beloved in the community, um, passed uh, rather suddenly. And it was recognized at that time from a uh, herpes virus that infects elephants. And one thing led to another. I got invited over to the Houston Zoo to talk about um, this issue and their problem. And I, um, you know, I really uh, fell in love with the zoo, the people working at the zoo. And uh, I thought about it for a while, and I thought, well, I think I have the expertise maybe to do something to help them out with this situation. And let's face it, uh, who, who wouldn't want to help do something to help save baby elephants? And when I first started working on this, I had an overall vision of the type of program that I thought uh, would help. And it had, um, I called it uh, Bench to Barn and it had three phases. Um, one phase was uh, to develop some diagnostics uh, to detect these types of viruses. Another one was to evaluate different types of treatments uh, for this elephant herpes virus. And while we were doing that, um, long term, we'd think about developing a vaccine. And the first two stages of this uh, were to develop tools to help veterinarians and elephant keepers um, detect um, this virus rapidly and hopefully institute some rapid treatments and again uh, doing something to help the situation early and give them tools right away while we took the longer term approach of developing a vaccine. When we started working with Baylor College of Medicine we just wanted to have a, a diagnostic test that we could use to find the disease before it kills the animal. Unbelievably, we had that within a year. So when we think about maybe what was available when Mac got sick and died, it's nothing like it is today. Today we are ready, we are stocked with plasma, we are treating with stem cells, we are doing early and aggressive treatment, and this is because we have diagnostics that can tell us within hours if we're dealing with EHV. So that diagnostic step is really probably the most critical thing that has changed the face of how we treat EHV because of that early detection. Uh, my name is Rob Bernardi. I'm the elephant curator here at the Houston Zoo and I have been here for about 21 years. Joy is a six-year-old female Asian elephant. Uh, she was born here at the Houston Zoo. Her mom's name is Shawnee. Her dad's name is Thailand. Um, you know, pregnancies are, are always a huge deal for the elephant team. Elephants are pregnant for 22 months, and throughout the course of those 22 months, you know, we spend a lot of time monitoring the health of mom and monitor the health of the calf as well. Um, elephant team will then stay here for um, around the clock until Shawnee actually delivers and um, um, in Joy's case, it was a night birth. I think it was around 8.30 or 9 o'clock at night. It was a pretty fast delivery, but uh, at the end of it, we had a, we had a healthy calf. So it's this, it's a, it's a big, long, drawn out process. And towards when you get to the end of it, it's, it's very labor intensive. So uh, once you have what hopefully is a healthy calf on the ground, it's, uh, everybody feels great about it. You know, we got lucky because we had, we had elephants born in between Mac and Joy, and none of them ever became clinical with EHV. We had uh, instances where they, they showed some virus in the blood, it was low level. We did some things, but it kind of resolved on its own. We put a lot of pressure on ourselves to 
um, train our younger elephants some of these behaviors um, that would uh, be very important for us in treating an EHV infection or any sort of medical emergency. Uh, one of those behaviors that we put, you know, that we really focused on, we were focusing on at the time was uh, blood collection. We weren't able to get reliable blood for her. We were practicing it and training it every single day. Um, and then um, this one day in April, uh, you know, like normal, we were practicing blood draw and we were able to get a blood sample. Uh, I was actually over at the zoo that day and they said, yeah, uh, Joy, uh, we got some blood from her. And then one of the vet techs said, yeah, the blood actually doesn't look quite normal. And I said, well, you know, um, let me just take it over. We'll do qPCR over at our lab this afternoon. We did that. And um, I stayed a little bit later to read the results and it came up positive. And the number actually came out as a concerning number. And of course, I called Christine Molter over at the Houston Zoo and said, um, I think you need to pull over. She was driving home. And uh, you know, I got some news about Joy. Um, I think it needs to be, all, you know, you need to be thinking about all hands on deck. Actually, we, we did an in-house uh, blood test as well. And what we saw and what he saw was that, oh, heck, she's got virus. She She's got a lot of virus in her blood. We need to put her on treatment. We started our own treatment that afternoon, and we continued to monitor her blood changes. Her virus load went way up. We're doing everything we can that we know to do to treat her. You know, we're doing sedations, we're giving IV fluids, and uh, we're giving her plasma transfusions, we're doing all that stuff, but the virus is replicating. She got so sick that we nearly lost her. And it was, you know, we, we want animals to have good death. And if we know that they're going to die, we, we will help them along with the euthanasia solution. And that's one of the hardest decisions we ever make. But um, two different days when I went to the barn, I carried a bottle of euthanasia solution. I thought I might have to use it. And, you know, by the day three, day four, when she's showing these real advanced physical symptoms and we're getting blood results back that aren't getting better, at this point we've been treating her for days and not just treating her, but really just throwing the kitchen sink at her. We're doing everything that we can do and think of to try and get a positive outcome out of this. Um, so we had been doing that for three or four days and she is continuing to progress negatively. So very deflating. Um, it was, yeah, it was scary to watch. She pulled through. I mean, again, it was a team effort. You know, being, being in, in my position, you know, you go in, you still gotta be, still gotta be rah-rah for the team that we got this. But, you know, deep down inside, I definitely thought she was gonna die. And it was about two days later when she kind of made the turn. The virus stabilized at around a half million, um, which was a good thing. Uh, but that, that was the tipping point for her, uh, to her body finally started to fight it off. But, it was a very scary time for sure. Um, what we also did was we started using blood products, uh, transfusions and uh, plasma and whole blood. And what we're seeing with that is that, gee, when they get blood that is from an elephant that's got antibodies, that they start getting better. And so almost all of the elephants that we've seen get clinically ill or, um, or get lethal infection had little to no um, maternal antibodies left on board um, when they got these infections um, that caused disease. Joy was the second elephant at the Houston Zoo on record to receive plasma as a treatment for EEHV. And she was the first one since we've really made plasma a gold standard in the treatment. So she did receive plasma during the course of her treatment, uh, sometimes multiple times a day, and it really did contribute to, it was one of many factors, we did give her a lot during the course of her treatments, but it was one of, a primary factor of one of the things that we gave that supported her through that crisis. We think these antibodies from the mother are potentially protective uh, for these young animals, and that they should get infected with this virus when they're very young. Uh, under the umbrella of protective maternal antibodies. If they escape getting infected during that time period and 
they get infected later in life when these maternal antibodies have gone away. We think that that's a potential vulnerability of these elephants to be able to handle the virus when they're first infected. We routinely collect plasma from the adults in the herd. Plasma is an invaluable, life-saving treatment for these animals. And so we have a whole minus 80 freezer, an ultra-low freezer full of plasma that's ready to go if and when we need it. So if we open this here, we're gonna look in this upper cabinet and this is where we have all of our elephant plasma and we have about five donors that contribute to this. We have them labeled with the date of the donation, the elephant's information and the amount. There is uh, an exciting development where there's a growing network of AZA institutions in North America and this is really being driven by the North American EEHV Advisory Group and uh, Dr. Christine, Kristen, our elephant supervisor and Dr. Pauling from Baylor are all on this advisory group uh, contributing to these things and one of the items that they're working towards is building this national database and proactively tracking, storing, and cross-matching across herds so that they can not only help their own herd in a crisis, but they can share with others. And the Houston Zoo has already benefited from that networking as well as we have provided donations to zoos that were in need. What we know now is saving elephants. It's going to save elephants in human care, but even better, it's going to save animals in the wild because the stuff that this relationship with Baylor College of Medicine and the knowledge that we're gaining through them, um, yes, it's going to help the elephants in human care, but the ultimate goal is that it's going to help elephants, it's going to save elephants everywhere. It's because of zoo elephants that we have a PCR test that's able to detect the virus in whole blood samples. Um, we worked with Baylor College of Medicine and Dr. Paul Ling to develop that test, and then it's a test that is used worldwide for elephants everywhere. And it's because of animals in human care at places like the Houston Zoo.